Thank you, Peter. I want to personally say that your sensitivity and sensibility transcends borders and boundaries to bring people together, to remember our history, and to and share it in our future. I also want to take the opportunity to personally acknowledge, thank, and say how much I admire Shlomo Goffman and Shmuley Kozman who are here on what they're doing and it's families. It's Shlomo, it's you and your wife, and Shmuley, you and your wife, and really helping us all remember and helping us remember for the future and educate the young generation. <laughs> And Kimberly, I saw you coming in, and I want to thank you for all the hard work, and I'd like to say, being here ambassador for two and a half years, the ceremony that we saw uh, yesterday was much more professional, educational, and emotional than ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to welcome all of you here to the heart of the family of nations. The march of the living, to my mind, is as much about life as it is about loss. It represents our tragedy and our triumph. It is a powerful and unique symbol of Jewish survival. A few years ago, I took part in the march of the living. I joined with 10,000 young people from all over the world and together we walked the archway from Auschwitz to the barracks of Birkenau. With Israeli flags on our backs, we walked the same path that killed too many of our people. We stood in the place that murdered morality and destroyed human dignity. We listened firsthand to courageous survivors tell their stories, their own personal stories on the same barracks that they personally were in. The March of the Living represents their own march, the survivor's march through life. It is a difficult journey, burdened by the pain of the past and the uncertainty of the future. Each step of the way, and you heard it from the survivor of the Shinders list, is paved with new hurdles and unimaginable struggles. The struggle to start a new life, to support a family, and sustain a belief in humanity. Each step forward brings them a little closer to healing and a li little further away from the memories that haunt them. Despite the immense difficulty, they march on, driven, by the will to live and the hope for the future. This journey symbolizes the triumph of good over evil, tolerance over prejudice, and faith over despair. The march of the living is a celebration of life. Today we stand on the brink of time when the Holocaust will change from memory to history. <laughs> As the generation of Holocaust survivors dwindles, the torch of remembrance and education must be passed forward. No more than ever, it is important to safeguard their own stories and share their message with the next young generation. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be the global guardians of remembrance and prevention. <coughs> The Holocaust didn't begin with ghettos and concentration camps. The Holocaust began when the seeds of hatred took root in the hearts of ordinary men and women. It is always, it's almost 70 years since the end of the Holocaust and the world is still plagued by prejudice. And as we speak, anti-Semitism is being sponsored, schooled, and spread by government, teachers, and some religious leaders. The message to us today is clear. Remembrance without resolve is meaningless. 
we must match our awareness with action. From the hills of Jerusalem to the halls of the United Nations, we must stand up for the Jewish people and the Jewish state. When attempts are made to demonize the state of Israel, we will speak out. When attempts are made to isolate Israel academics and businesses, we will speak out. And when Israel is singled out with biased resolutions, believe me, we will speak out. But we should not speak out alone. <clears throat> the international community must unite against bias and bigotry, prejudice and persecution. We must work together to resist hatred wherever it raises its ugly head. From Cambodia to Congo, from Syria to Sudan, we must stand up for human rights. It's not enough to be shocked by the images on TV or on the social media status updates. It's not enough. We must teach our children tolerance, justice, and mutual respect. We must teach them that prejudice is not praiseworthy, terror is not tolerable, and war crimes are not warranted. We must teach them to heed to the lessons of history, for only then can the words never again truly have a meaning. Ladies and gentlemen, 70 years ago, the Jewish people were powerless to defend themselves. Today, the state of Israel and the Israeli army are standing guard day and night over the nation state of the Jewish people. I, Ron Posso, am proud to stand before you, the son of Uri Posso, who fled Nazi Germany when Israel was just a dream, and the father of three Israeli children for whom Israel is not a dream, but a vibrant reality. Each and every day, I stand before the international community as a proud representative of the state of Israel. 70 years ago, the Jewish people didn't have a voice, nor a friend, or a place of refuge. Today, we have a prominent voice in the international community. We have friends who stand beside us, and we have a state that will forever be the homeland of the Jewish people. Thank you very, very much. Yeah.